welcome back to the simulation. I'm gonna try this little face cam out to see if it helps engage the video a little better. But in this video, we are going to be talking about RAM. So how I made the RAM module, how I optimized the RAM module, and what exactly does it do? So let's go into the simulation right now and see ex exactly how I made the circuit. So this is the RAM circuit right here. What is RAM? So let's go over this first. So the way computers store memory is as we have seen with registers, and that's inside the CPU itself called the cache. So that is fast memory, but it's not a lot of it really. It's only a few megabytes in today's technology, but it's really fast. It can go within a few clock cycles. RAM, on the other hand, can store gigabytes worth of memory. It's a little slower, but it's not as slow as a hard drive. So it's where computers store data that they're gonna need within a few seconds, but not at this instant right here. So that's what we're gonna build today in order for us to store more memory than just using one register. Um, our RAM's gonna be a little different though because normal RAM uses a transistor and a capacitor in order to store memory. And so how, how does this work? Um, a capacitor can store charge as we all know. And if it, has, if it's 100% full or over 50%, we're gonna count that as a one. And if it's lower than 50%, we're gonna count that as a zero. But every time we read the RAM, we drain the capacitor a little bit since we need a little bit of current in order to read it. So with RAM using this capacitor transistor circuit, every few so um, clock cycles, you'll need to refill the capacitor up if it's supposed to be a one but it's getting really close to 50% capacity in order to maintain the data so the data is not all lost. Um, this simulation obviously does not have capacitors, so we're just gonna use registers to store data, but you can do that with in modern CPUs, and we do do that. So I just want to clarify with that too. Um, RAM, like registers, is volatile, so as soon as you stop the simulation, unplug it, or don't give power to it, all the data is lost. So um, we have to take that into consideration too, because every time we reopen the software, new data gets spit onto the registers and it's completely random. Before we get started talking about this RAM, um, I wanna show where it is on a computer actually. So you have the CPU on the motherboard, just like this, and then you have these almost four little bins, you could say, on the right-hand side of the CPU if you're looking directly at the motherboard, and that's the RAM. So you could buy these little sticks of RAM uh, called DDR4 or DDR5 now, and then you have SDR, but we don't use SDR. So DDR stands for double data rate RAM, and that means when the clock cycle goes from low to high, it stores data, and when it goes from high to low, it stores data. So every edge of the clock cycle, it stores data. So that's why it's called double data rate because we're effectively storing data twice per clock cycle. And then SDR stands for single data rate. So we only store data one time per clock cycle. And that is, that's what we're gonna use. We're not gonna do DDR right now. This RAM module is single data rate. Let's look at the logic gates right now and then see exactly how I designed this. So this is a personal design for the CPU that I'm working on that combines all the modules we talked about previously into one um, computing device. So this is going to be my personal inputs in order to suit those needs. So we had these four um, binary inputs and that allows us to store whatever data we want onto each register. So we could store the number, let's say eight or 10 or whatever onto so-and-so register. This right here, the, we can decide whether we want store mode on. So we store it to the RAM or we want load mode on where we load, load the output on. So we turn the output on effectively. You'll see in a second. Um, this right here is pretty self-explanatory. It's the rows and the columns. So in order to decide which module we want, 
we have to pick what row we want on and then what column we want on. And the way that works is we just use AND gates. So we're effectively saying if column A is on and row A is on, then we want register A to be on. <laughs> and then this is just a little decoder right here that takes two inputs and makes them the four. So nothing special. But so let's say we have register zero, zero on and we have the load mode on. So it loads, or it's a store mode. So load mode is on. So it loads whatever register zero, zero is holding onto the bus, which is nothing. So nothing is being loaded onto the, um, the bus. But let's say we want to store data. We're going to store 10. So we put store mode on the register becomes activated, stores it, and then we load it onto the bus, just like that. And we can turn this off too, since it's stored it now. And the way this works is we just hook up more AND gates to the circuit. So it can't store data and then load data at the same time, because that would have messed up our CPU in the future, because it would be trying to store and load within too many clock cycles. And it, it wouldn't work out. So that's that's the thought process behind that. Um, each cell is very self-explanatory because I kind of already explained it. It's just a register with a tri-state buffer and then these, this little AND circuit in order to control what we want it to do basically. Um, yeah, so actually the RAM module is really, really easy because we already learned all these components before and we're just putting it in a different array for us to store data a little easier. So instead of having eight of these uh, registers just out in our CPU, we can have it in this array. So it takes less inputs to get the same outputs. Basically what we're doing. Um, yes, so let's look at the CPU now that I made, I already made it but we're just gonna see how it looks like in it so we get a feel. But I'm not gonna explain it all in this video. So this is the RAM module right here. So our code comes in from this bus. This is the, this is the data bus and the code bus, but it's split in half. So the data will come into the RAM and then we'll have whether or not what we want to do with that data also come in the RAM which will then get fed from the outputs into the LU to do math on it. And then we can restore the output of the ALU back into the, a different RAM module. That was pretty much all the basic information I have to say for the RAM module. Um, next video, we're gonna go over the either updated program counter or the control unit. And then we're gonna wrap it all up with this little basic, uh, CPU that I made in the near future, so stay tuned.